Hi, my name is uh, Ian Flynn. I'm the head of Creative Solutions. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you all about how mindfulness helps me be a better marketer. So I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story about my experience with mindfulness, uh, how it's helped me in my life, and how it's helped me in my career uh, and being a marketer. Hopefully it can help you guys too. But beforehand, uh, I'm going to talk to you about what mindfulness is. Some people might have heard of it already. Uh, and it usually goes into these two categories. It usually goes into hipsters or Buddhas. <laughs> for me, doing, uh, doing mindfulness isn't about being cool, it isn't about being spiritual. Um, for me, it's literally optimising the way I think. Let me define it a little bit more. Mindfulness, from the external perspective, is being aware of the sights, sounds, smells and tastes of the present moment. So it's really checking in to your senses and understanding what's happening right here and right now, noticing exactly what's happening right this second. Internal is having awareness of our own thoughts and feelings as they happen moment to moment. So it's using the same kind of thinking behind the fact that it's moment to moment, it's very present, but you're actually doing it within yourself. So understanding when thoughts appear and when they leave, uh, naming these thoughts. So I know we've all been there when we've got deadlines to meet and we've got too much work on and so forth. And it, it, instead of getting caught up in those emotions, it's understanding that, okay, that's me just feeling anxious. Uh, and it's actually stepping back from that a little bit and getting a sense of clarity uh, that these, these, these thoughts, they just come and they go. What does it involve? So like I said, it's like noticing the present moment. It's really being here and now as opposed to past and, and future. It's trying and experiencing new things. So it's, I guess, the antithesis of mindfulness is being on autopilot. Again, we've all probably been there in life where we're just going about our days, um, kind of getting up at the same time, going to work, eating the same food, coming home. We've all been there. Uh, it's fine, nothing wrong with it, but it's not really living life to its entirety. Uh, so this usually partners with mindfulness really well. It's reconnecting your body and mind. Um, I know I've heard a few times, it's, we've had days where we've lived in our own heads and our body has just been a transporter for our brain. Uh, and mindfulness helps you recon reconnect your, everything in, in one place. So you, you're, you're understanding that it's not just about your brain, it's not just about your thoughts, but it's about everything. It's about living in the present moment. It does involve meditation. Um, it's not essential. I know um, when you think of meditation, you think of lotus position and all that kind of stuff. For me, the reason why I think meditation is important with it is because it allows you to take 10 minutes out, or uh, however many times out, and really notice what's happening inside and outside. Um, but as I say, it's not essential. Um, it, it, you can do it any time. You can do it uh, while going for a walk. You can do it on our lunch break um, and really pay attention to the food that you're eating. Um, it can last 30 seconds, it can last 30 minutes. It, 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 there's no real rules to it. It's just constantly checking in and it's trying to get that within uh, the way you live on a day-to-day -day basis. And the reason why I don't think it's a fad, I don't think it's something that, that um, is going to come and go, is because there's, there's quite significant evidence that mindfulness can literally reshape your neural pathways. Um, uh, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, brains are, are kind of uh, have that neuroplasticity where they can adjust and move and change. It's, a, it's an adaptive thing that happens constantly. Uh, and constantly um, practicing mindfulness, like constantly going to the gym, um, actually affects your brain in different ways. It can actually strengthen your brain in certain ways. And I'm going to tell you how that's happened with me over the past 10 years or so. So let's start from the beginning. I was a big Power Rangers fan, still am, sort of. But when I was about eight years old, I, I was obsessed with them. Me and my cousin used to do play fights out in the garden, and I used to be the blue one. I don't know why he was the kind of nerdy one. I should have gone for the red one. <laughs> um, but uh, but um, I, I love the idea of being, being a hero and beating the bad guys and trying to be the good guy and all that. Thankfully, I grew out of it and got into football about 10, 11. That's me with ridiculous ginger curtains, and I don't know why I, I adopted those. Um, that's, that's us, Crawley Town FC, um, beating the Three Bridges to get the Knockout Cup, I think. Um, one of my proudest moments of my life. <laughs> I think there's more since that, but at the time, it was pretty proud. But, uh, I got rid of the uh, ginger curtains, thankfully. Found girls, as a result, uh, and, <laughs> and, got, and found skateboarding. Um, and I was a bit of a, a delinqu delinquent for about three or four years, um, as we all are, I guess, when we're, we're in our teenagehood. I then found music, uh, which I still do to this day, I think, as, as you guys know. I then uh, studied politics uh, as in A-levels, and then graphic design and product design within A-levels as well. Uh, then got a degree in graphic media. Um, I went to university, as everybody else does, but ended up with a degree. Uh, and at that point, I felt like I was ready to conquer the world. I think I had everything lined up. I'd had all my qualifications in place, had a real understanding of what I wanted to do for a living. And I had a kind of thirst to try and change the world for the better because of the politics um, that I'd kind of been studying. I realised that everyone was doing it wrong and I could do it a lot better. So now I'm going to do it and just show what it's all about. 
So I got a job, luckily, after university. Um, it was just three of us in a publishing company in Tunbridge Wells. About the first couple of years was going well. I was learning my trade, learning how, how, how things worked in business. Uh, then it got to a point with publishing where, uh, as we all know, I think we've all, some of us have discovered it as well, where uh, it started to, to take a decline because of the, the growth of digital. Uh, and I saw redundancies happening around me, and I saw um, one of our biggest clients actually left uh, to go in the house to try and save money. Um, so as a result, it really hit us as a very small team. Um, so we, we ended up getting bought out by another client of ours, which is struck quite odd, getting bought out by a client. But um, we got bought out of a client and we moved to Hammersmith. Um, there was no increase in my salary at this point. Um, I was kind of going from about four hours a day commute. Uh, and I just got my, my mortgage with my, uh, with my wife for, the first, for my first house. And um, yeah, it, it started to get a little bit ropey, I'll be honest, because I was, I was getting the mortgage and uh, I was leaking money, literally leaking money. Um, and actually made me quite poorly. Um, I had a, a bouts of anxiety and panic attacks um, and had to do something about it. it was, there was part of me and it was part of a lot of other people uh, within that generation. It's still happening now where, um, where anxiety and depression kind of take over because there's so much expectation to try and change the world and to try and make a difference in that sense. Um, so I kind of really felt that and I felt like I, I had all these expectations to, to do something and, and then got hit quite immediately with the reality of life. Um, the NHS really wasn't, wasn't adapted to, to mental health as it is a lot more now. Um, but um, so what I had to do is I had to find my inner Power Ranger, the blue <laughs> one over there. Uh, and I had to, I had to, um, I found mindfulness and I found lots of books and so forth. Uh, and started practicing it. What I did with mindfulness, as I started, it was really difficult at first. I'm not going to lie, it was really difficult. It took me a long time to kind of retrain my brain to, to start thinking differently. Because um, I, was, I, was, you know, I was worrying a lot about things, worrying about well, what job I was going to get in, if I was going to afford the mortgage, all this kind of stuff. But was stop, wasn't really noticing about the present and about now. So it took me you know, a good couple of years to really start to understand the benefits of it. Uh, and I start to understand, start to see things in a lot clearer way and then be a lot more calmer in the way that I was dealing with things. So back to the, the subject matter, the fact that we're all marketers and something that we can all uh, connect with is how did mindfulness help me or how does it help me be a better marketer? So firstly, it's all the inspiration I needed was right there in front of me. Um, I think we can all, we, no, we're all familiar with forecasting and projections and targets and numbers and all this kind of stuff, which is absolutely essential to marketing. It will never change. It's something that's part of marketing. But it wasn't the be all and end all. It's not about what's going to happen uh, now and what's going to happen then. It's about what's happening right now. So the inspiration I needed was right there in front of me, actually paying attention to things, paying attention to how people acted, how people behaved, what cultural shifts were happening. That is what it was about. And actually me noticing that in the present was all the research I needed. A good example of this is one of my heroes, John Lasseter, who's the um, chief creative officer of Pixar. And one of his big things, he's massive on R&D, um, research and development. And what he does is he, he spends about a year before every uh, film to um, really understand the subject matter of what they're trying to uh, animate for. Um, so he'll get his team um, to, to, you know, to really, to really uh, immerse themselves in certain subjects. Um, he does this with his directors. Uh, Brad Bird was one for Ratatouille. Uh, and what they did is they actually got um, a rat into their offices for an amount of time and studied it, and studied how it interacted, how it behaved. And that really kind of spawned how Remy acted as a, as a character. Similarly, they took some of his um, animators to France and they went to uh, kitchens and they studied um, the chefs, well, how they behaved, how they looked, studied the kitchens, studied the sewers, uh, studied the meals, everything. And, and, and you can start to see that there's a degree of authenticity with this, anim in an, this animation because they, they, they felt it and they were there firsthand to see it. They actually interviewed a, a top chef with the best um, meal that they've ever had. Uh, and this top chef um, was, was choked up about how lovely it was and got quite emotional. Um, and that actually spawned you know, the narrative for Ratatouille and, and they managed to convey that within, within the, uh, the storyline. Um, and they would never have done that if they didn't consciously try and pay attention to, to these experiences. So what, what does mindfulness do? So I'm going to get the old red thing going on here. Um, two bits, the amygdala, which some people might be familiar with, it's the reptilian part of your brain. So I know some of you might have heard, read the chimp paradox, it's that, that inner chimp um, that, that acts um, on fight or flight mentality. So when you're feeling fearful or when you're feeling um, yeah, anxious or whatever, it's that instant reaction of, um, of trying to protect yourself. 
So when you do mindfulness, that, that section of the brain actually shrinks, physically shrinks. The prefrontal cortex, which is the most evolved part of the human brain, uh, deals with a lot more human-based things. Um, so uh, rationality, uh, creative uh, problem solving, uh, strategizing, hypothesizing, um, visions, all that kind of stuff. Imagination, empathy, uh, all the things that you could, uh, you know, classes as things that are original to humans. Um, happen within this section and lo and behold when you do mindfulness around time this increases and the, the, the things that I just listed off there especially strategizing, hypothesizing, problem solving massive massive parts of marketing uh, for me so, so I think without realizing, without doing it with that aim I think me practicing mindfulness allows me to, to, to do those things with a little bit more clarity um, I touched on empathy just a minute ago but good marketing is about empathising, I've said this a few times before, it's about understanding what people want right here right now within the current culture, what materials they want, what um, you know, social um, requirements they need, anything, there's, there's, there's so much to it and it's understanding how we can empathise with these people and how we can make a difference to the, to, to the communications between them. So I guess that's it, that's my story of, of mindfulness and how it's helped me and helped my career. Um, and I guess for me, it's, it's trying to encourage you all to maybe just give it a go. It doesn't have to be meditation, but just think about it. Next time you catch yourself getting caught up in, oh, I'm really worried about this deadline or something, just catch yourself. That's half the battle. If you catch yourself doing it, um, it, it, it actually you know, allows you, it empowers you to then start thinking about the present uh, and start being a lot more effective as a marketer. If you're interested in it, I've got lots of books that um, I've read that are super good. Mindfulness is the first one I read. Creativity Inc. is, is about Pixar um, uh, and Mindsight talks about the more neurological side of things as well if you're interested in the science. So come, come speak to me. That's it.